Welcome to Beat Source Basics. My name is Mojax, and today we are going back to the fundamentals, to the roots of DJing. If you're going to be DJing with a turntable, then it's really important whether you're using regular vinyl or a digital vinyl system that you know how to correctly set up and calibrate your tone arms. So before we start with the manual method, the very best way to adjust the weight of your tone arm and make sure it's balanced correctly is by using one of these small digital scales. You know, these are available very affordably from all the big online retailers. You're looking at like 10 bucks or something like that. And all you do is turn it on, make sure it's zeroed out, put the needle into the center, check the reading. And then I know in this case for this Concord Mark II scratch, I'm actually looking for four grams. So I'm just going to dial in the counterweight until I get to four grams. It's that simple. It's that straightforward. I do thoroughly recommend these. I've done a video about them once before. They're really, really good. But it must be said, they're not terribly practical for life on the road. They're not durable at all. They're just designed for home use. I'm already on my second one because I broke the last one I had. And so, yeah, this is not something to take out with you. On the road, you're going to need to use the manual balancing method. One quick note before we start, if your cartridge has a removable stylus cover, make sure you take that off before you start your balancing. Now, I saw one video where the person actually left it on, and this thing doesn't weigh much, but it does weigh something, so it will have an impact on the balancing of your arm. Now, with the Shaw or the Geco m 447s then you may well want to leave that one on. I generally do, because you can flip it down and protect your stylus when you're just in general. So that one will generally stay on there. That's not removable. But if you do generally remove it, then remove it before you balance your arm. If you leave it on, leave it on. So in order to properly balance and set up our tone arm, there are three elements that we need to consider. One is the height of the tone arm or the vertical tracking. The second is the anti-skate. And the third is balancing the cartridge itself onto the arm. So we're going to dig into all three of those right now. The first and kind of most important one is actually balancing the tone arm. So here we have a regular head shell. And I'm just going to mount that one on there. That's got a Geco M447 on there or a Geco 447. You could use a Concorde all in one. They all have the same connector there with the four pins on the back. And they all have a small little tab on the top to help you line them up. There's a slot there in the arm itself. Now, one thing I will say to you is never over tighten that onto there because if you over tighten it, you run the risk of actually snapping off the little tab on the top and then it will never mount properly again. That is a dead head shell or in the case of a Concorde, a dead cartridge. I've done that myself in the past. You don't want to do it. It's not a good thing. So I'm going to take my head shell, I'm going to mount it on there. The next thing we have to consider is the tone arm counterweight that we have there. At the moment, I've got the arm locked in. So this counterweight has numbers on one side that is always the side that goes to the front towards the cartridge because we're going to use those numbers to align and it's weighted it's obviously heavier at the rear this front section is plastic it's not so heavy and this number section actually rotates freely on the counterweight which is what we're looking for because we're going to use this to balance the arm itself so i'm going to pop the counterweight on and what i'm going to try and do is just basically get this arm to the point where it is free floating that's going to be our zero point. So we want it so it's not dropping down at the front, not dropping down at the back. We just want it gently balanced so it kind of floats freely. And that could take a few tries to get it just right. So that's a tiny bit up. So we've got more. That is now floating freely. So now I'm going to just pop that into place for a moment. I'm going to turn just the numbers now. So just the number dial, not touching the counterweight itself. I'm going to turn that around so that the zero marker lines up with the line on the top of the tone arm. And that's now done. And then we're going to dial in the weight that we want. So for this 44.7, I'm going for 2.5 grams. So I'm going to dial it in. And these numbers on the counterweight correlate to the number of grams. So 2.5, line that up with the line on the top. And that's it. We've now put 2.5 grams of weight on there. And we have a stylus, which is perfectly balanced it's not skipping around it's not overly weighted if you put too much weight on it's going to sound bad if you don't put enough on it's going to skip so and if you put too much on as well that's also going to prematurely wear out your stylus and your vinyl as well and especially if you're playing real vinyl obviously that's a very important thing you'll also get the cleanest signal into your dvs system so it's so important to balance these properly 
and it's kind of a misconception that just chucking tons of weight on will actually give you better scratching performance. It's just not accurate. You know, these cartridges are designed to accept a certain amount of weight. They are designed to perform with a certain amount of weight put on them. The, the cantilever, the suspension, all of this is designed very carefully to work properly in a certain way with a certain weight. And if you go chucking like, you know, a, a quarter on the head shell or something, a penny like we used to do in the UK, yeah, that might have helped uh, Stanton 500 back in the day stay in the groove a bit more, but it was also tearing chunks out of your records while it did it. The correct recommended weight from the manufacturer is always going to give you the best performance. If they're still not working after that, then chances are there's something else wrong, maybe in the tone arm or something like that. You've got to just, that's the main thing. Stick to the recommended weight from the manufacturer. Now, the second thing we're going to talk about is the arm height. And that's very important because... Again, too much height and you're kind of pushing the front of the cartridge or the front of the stylus into the grooves, not enough, and it's putting the back of it, and especially with a low profile cartridge with a big flat section at the base like a 44, then you're gonna end up with the actual cartridge itself grinding onto the vinyl. Again, not something you want. It needs to be, the arm needs to be horizontal, so perfectly level when it's on the record. So the way to do that is it's just really by eye. I'm sure there are, you know, spirit level kind of things you can get for this purpose, but just by eye, you're going to go round to this side of the table, to the far side. You're going to look, lower yourself down and look and make sure that the arm looks level from the actual gimbal end to the cartridge and make sure it's lined up. You can use a ruler or something, just put the front and the rear of the tone arm to measure it by eye. Again, you want it to be as flat as possible. So it's completely level. Now, if you're using very thin slip mats, like these DJ City ones that I'm using here, which are basically paper thin, and you know, you're know you using, or butter rugs or something like that, then actually, you're generally on a 1200 gonna wanna slam the arm height to zero because you're using, with a 44.7, quite a low profile cartridge, and you're using a very thin slip mat. Whereas if you're using maybe an older felt slip mat, like these old bedrock ones, for example, these are like, four times the thickness, maybe more. These are like three or four mil thick. So there is a lot more to consider about that thick. You know, you've got to make sure that arm height, this one, an old Dex.co.uk one is even thicker. This is probably like all getting on for five millimeters thick. So that will impact where the arm height needs to go. To adjust the arm height, all you do is unlock the tone arm. And then that will give you the chance to turn it clockwise, to raise the arm or go anti-clockwise with the ring to lower it down. As I say, generally for me with very thin slip mats, I'm gonna slam it. But a lot of the time I'm using Dr. Suzuki donuts with my 45s. I have a butter rug underneath and the donuts, again, they're fairly thick, you know, three, maybe three mil thick. So I wanna generally raise the arm up a little bit. This is one, one kind of part of this operation that you might not be able to do at a venue, for example, because often these are seized. Um, in fact, one of them on these two decks here was kind of seized up before I started making this video. So I just had to put a bit of, uh, I actually used deoxit and just put it down in the gap between the ring and the arm body itself. And that did, it kind of loosened it up enough that I could then get it loosened up. So, but that's one of the areas where if you're having a service done on a 1200, it needs to be done every few years or so, just to make sure that ring still spins freely when it's unlocked. Then once you've adjusted the height, you're sure your height is level, then you need to put the lock back on to ensure that the tone arm is nicely rock solid into place as it should be. Um, and that will give you the best performance again for tracking. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about, the last element of balancing a tone arm is the anti-skate. Now, this is generally for DJs, a fit and forget kind of procedure because what you're gonna do, if you're doing any kind of scratching, back cueing, just cueing up records, anything like that, then the anti-skate should be set to zero. The reason anti-skate exists is because when you're playing vinyl normally with an S-shaped tone arm, this is a custom straight arm on this Technic, so even less applicable here, but generally, yeah, when you're playing with an S-shaped tone arm, the forces, because of the way the arm is angled against the pivot, there's forces generally trying to bring the arm towards the center of the deck. The forces are bringing it in like that. And what happens is you generally get then more of a kind of preference from the stylus towards one side of the groove. Therefore your stereo field, your stereo imaging is slightly off. And that, that does apply with zero. So we have anti-skate for that. The idea is that you turn it up to the amount of grams that you've weighted 
So in this case, I would turn it up to two and a half and that would then balance that out and give me perfect stereo imaging for the absolute top notch sound quality, the very best. That's great. But the problem is when you're cutting and scratching or just back cueing in general, then you're putting a different force onto the turntable. It's only supposed to go forwards. These are only designed to go forwards clockwise. That's what they're designed for. So if you end up putting the anti-skate on, what that's trying to do, and you can see if I just unbalance this again, put that back to zero, just let go. You see the force is bringing it back to the rest. And that's obviously with the anti-skate fully on, but that is a force which is not going to be helpful at all when you're pulling the record backwards instead of just playing the record forward. So if you're doing something like ripping your vinyl to a computer, recording it in or something like that, or just listening, you want the very best sound quality you can get from your turntable, then sure, set it as you would if you're a hi-fi person, you know, turn the anti-skate up to two and a half to match the amount of uh, force you've got on the counterweight, that would that would work absolutely fine. But for DJ purposes, always whack it round to zero, leave it there. That is a set and forget kind of thing. And that's it. So now I've got my zero is still there. I can wind it back to two and a half. And I know that's still weighted to two and a half. And it's still going to be perfectly weighted and perfectly balanced. It's going to give me the very best performance. And that's it. So it might seem like a bit of a dark art, but really it is just a science and something that you just have to understand to weight something properly really not that hard to do and now what i'm going to do is just going to demonstrate to you that actually this is pretty accurate what i've done here let's have a look so this is my vinyl stylus pressure gauge set to zero this is the arm that i've weighted manually using the method that i've outlined there let's pop that on what have we got 2.51 grams you know this is the kind of accuracy you can get just take a few seconds to actually do that manual weighting process, you don't need a stylus pressure gauge out in the field. They're great to have in the studio or at home, you know, in your bedroom, they're really useful and they're very cheap and I definitely recommend them, but you can achieve just the same kind of result just with that manual balancing anywhere you are. There's one little bonus tip I wanna give you as well while we're here and that is sometimes you might have a very heavy cartridge. If you've installed some of the autophones come with the extra weights that you can put into the head shell, and with those, you might find that you actually need the little small metal subweight that goes into the back of the tone arm on a Technics and on other tone arms that are available. Because in my case here, with this Smoking Shells gold head shell, which is fantastic, but it's real gold plated, which means the head shell itself is quite a bit heavier than a lot of other arm or a lot of other head shells. And so I can't actually get to the point with this one where I can manually get to that zero point. By the time I get to that zero point, the counterweight is basically off the back, it's off the threads, and so I can't manually balance this arm. In that case, I'm, I'm gonna need either to use a stylus pressure gauge, which will work fine. So I can pop that on there and get that to my, it's gotta be four on the VNLs. So I can get to that four, and I can do that with my pressure gauge. But if I'm out and about in the field, I can't do that. So you will need to make sure that you've got that extra little counterweight, uh, the, the extra weight that physically screws into the back of the arm to balance this correctly. Those weights exist because a lot of hi-fi cartridges are quite heavy and we'll put them up to the level on this, but there's just literally no way I can manually balance this one on here at all. And if you have a very light head shell, also, again, you know, there are weights that will go into the top of a lot of head shells, like the Technics head shells have a, a, an extra weight that will go in the top. And again, if your head shell and cartridge combo is too light, and you know, there are extra ways to balance this out. The key to it is always just make sure that at the end of the day, your balance is correct and it's what it should be according to the manufacturer. So there you go, a quick guide to setting up and calibrating the tone arms on your DJ turntables. The important takeaway from this video is that this is not some kind of art form. This is in fact a science. There is a correct way of doing things. Every component of your turntable, from the feet through to the plinth, the platter, the tone arm, and the stylus itself, every single component is designed to interact with the other components in a very specific way. And so the best starting point will always be the manufacturer's recommended settings, without a doubt. Now, if you want to go a little bit left field and go outside the lines a little bit, as long as you understand the potential consequences of doing so, then that's fine. But you could end up with skipping needles or with poor sound quality or excessive wear to your stylus or to the records themselves. 
So you've got to be aware of the correct way of doing things before you start to experiment. Now, I'm fascinated to know because I'll put my hands up, right? I was one of those DJs in the early days of my career, many years ago now. I didn't know any of this. I was that guy with the penny on the head shell, gouging massive grooves out of my vinyl every time I played it because I just didn't understand how this was supposed to be done. I didn't learn it for quite a few years, perhaps maybe five years after I started DJing before I learned how to do all this stuff. So if you're an old head and you're watching this, let us know in the comments below, how long did it take you to understand how to weight and balance your tone arms properly? Because I'm really, really fascinated to know. Thank you for watching this episode of BeatSource Basics. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do give the video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed and you turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you next time.